All right, let's get started. Good afternoon, everyone. The International Parking Mobility Institute presents today's Learning Lab, Parking Building Design, What You Need to Know About High Performance Stores, presented by Herman Innovative Door Systems. My name is Kenny, and I'll be moderating today's presentation. As a reminder, today's presentation is being recorded. We will make the recording available online and we'll post it to IPMI's YouTube channel within a few days. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping rules for today. This learning lab will last 60 minutes with a Q&A session at the end. If you have questions for today's speaker, please feel free to queue up, queue up a question at any time by typing it in the Q&A tab. Then navigate to the Zoom menu, click on the Q&A icon, and a window will open. Please type your questions and click send. We will get to as many as time allows. You may, in, you may also interact in the chat. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Brian Bram, Regional Sales Manager, Great Lakes Territory. Brian Bram is a regional sales manager for the Great Lakes Territory for Herman High Performance Store Division. He has 17 years of experience within the high performance store sector, including operations management, key account development, and as a regional sales manager. And now I'm going to turn the audience over to our speaker. Brian, the audience is all yours. Thank you, Kenny. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, appreciate the warm introduction. Um, today we are learning about high performance doors and where they can be applied what to look for um, and, and when you would apply these types of doors. So just a brief description on high performance doors. High performance doors have been around for over 40 plus years. Uh, some of you have probably driven through an opening with the high performance door and probably didn't even realize it was there. Um, they're a, a great solution for demanding high traffic areas within behind the scenes types of industrial applications and uh, high performance doors are a popular choice also for high visible and demanding applications, such as parking garages and stadiums, which is our focus today. Our learning objectives today are three of them. Um, the first one being why high performance doors are the smart choice as compared to conventional rolling steel or sectional type doors. Number two is three high performance door models designed for parking applications. And three is available resources available to the end user, the architect, the customer, specifying for specifying high performance doors for a renovation or a new construction projects. In the high performance door world, typically what I'm sorry, in, in the parking garage world is what we typically see is what you're seeing on the screen here. There's limits to the conventional sectional and rolling steel type products. Um, the list is very lengthy. We actually had two slides on and I reduced it to one because it's there's a lot there. But these are the main um, the main problems that we see. Um, number one being extremely expensive to operate and maintain. Uh, a lot of old technology here, harder to get the parts, harder to maintain. Um, high utility bills also are in regards to the fact that the doors are very slow and cumbersome uh, for use. The slower the door, the more potential energy will escape through the opening, and that's where a high performance door would help reduce that. Again, expensive replacement parts. As you can see from the picture there for car damages, a, a door like this, it's basically rendered completely you know, useless, and potentially you'd have to buy a whole new door um, or a very expensive parts. User unfriendly, poor aesthetics and noise, a rolling steel type door is very squeaky, very slow. Um, and from an aesthetic standpoint, not very appealing. Uh, the doors are easily damaged with no easy turnaround for repair, which I just spoke about. No self repairing function. Service is always gonna be required, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, high performance doors and, and the design of them are designed around being able to uh, keep the door from being impacted and therefore not having that extra downtime. Uh, higher maintenance costs on conventional and rolling steel doors. Um, most people in this industry are doing preventive maintenance three, four times a year. If they're not doing that, then the doors are gonna wear a lot faster than they're designed to do. Um, limited durability in high cycles. That's a big one for us, and that's what we sell a lot against, the sectional and rolling steel type doors. A majority of our doors, if not all of them for this type, these types of applications, are revolved around a direct drive, which removes any types of springs, which is a wear item. Um, 
that low cycle cycle life of, of, a, of a door with springs is 12 to 50,000, maybe even 100,000 cycles, but that's not always guaranteed. So those are kind of the problems that we see in the industry. When you're talking to an end user, it's real easy to kind of hone in on what their issues are. And it's usually one of these, if not all of these, these items here. The solution, what is a high performance store? According to DASMA, which is the Door and Access Systems Manufacturers Association uh, uh, International, high performance doors are powered operating, rolling, folding, sliding, non-residential doors characterized by either 100 or more cycles per day or having an opening speed of 20 or more inches per second. And 20 or more inches per second is on the low end of high performance doors. Um, they get anywhere up to 100 inches per second on a regular basis. So those, those are the parameters there, the, the cyclage and the speed are, are what we usually go to and talk about. Um, the classification is either fabric or rigid within the fabric family. It's also a rubber type material, almost a belting material for layman's terms. So you have a fabric, a rubber, and a rigid type door app, um, options in our lineup at Herman. They assist in reducing energy costs and accommodate high cycles with the minimal maintenance. Again, direct drive and no springs. Um, they are made to order, designed for higher durability. And that's the main goal here. We have doors out in the field that have 500, 1 million cycles on them with minimal maintenance required on that. Uh, includes safety features and activations which make the door safer for people, equipment and products to pass through. This really revolves around the speeds of these doors. Because they're so fast to open, they're also very fast to close. So we wanna make sure when we're consulting and recommending not only the equipment, we're also walking through the perimeter of the door as well, the exit, the entrance, making sure that the door isn't um, going to pre prematurely come down if somebody's walking through it. So there's a number of safety features involved um, when we're talking about the doors. Um, the really cool feature for our fabric and rubber models are they're designed with a breakaway and self-repairing feature for minimal maintenance. That's huge. Um, it, even our rigid doors, if they're not holding stock of the, of the slats, if they get damaged, there's going to be some downtime. With fabric and rubber, virtually none. You could literally replace these doors, or I'm sorry, you could, you could fix these doors in the, in a little, as little as 30 seconds, depending on the door type. Here's a little video of the side-by-side. -side. This is what we're seeing in the industry up to the left is your standard rolling steel door. In this case, it's mounted outside. So you've got the big shroud over the top. That door there has a spring that's inside of the, the barrel. And you can see from the opening and closing speed, we're double the height and we're opening and closing in 11 seconds or less, just depending on the hold open feature, whereas the rolling steel takes forever. And again, that rolling steel door has a very limited cycle rating for the spring. On the next slide here, another comparison. This is a rigid type door. This is our guardian door. Again, this door is a lot faster than even the fabric door. Um, one thing to note is all of these doors are fully adjustable. You can ramp the speed down, you can ramp the speed up. Um, they don't have to be going full out. So in this case here, we probably adjusted the speed so that you have a lot smoother of an operation while it's opening and closing. And that will also reduce the wear and tear on that operator, which is the only thing really moving that door. So those are two pretty good examples. We love to show those side-by-sides because when the customer sees that right away, you're kind of pulling on the heartstrings. They understand the value of the speed. And then we can go on to other things that they're worried about. We're designed to fill a variety of needs and applications, real working solutions. So we're always out there looking for different applications. We have multiple configurations. A majority of the doors are what we call direct drive. So the motor would be up near the top of the, of the, of the unit. Uh, but we also have operators and, and models that are able to be mounted on the front. So if there's side room 
restraints or headroom restraints, we have ability to kind of make a door that's going to fit the application and still would be in that high performance. So here's what we're talking about today. I mean, we go, uh, we go well beyond what we're talking about today, but the focus is obviously for parking, um, multifamily housing, high rise apartments, um, just general parking, uh, arenas and stadiums. The benefits, this is the most important thing here. What are the benefits of a high performance store? It's that increased efficiency of operation due to the reduction of energy costs. When you're heating and cooling a building, a majority of the time in, in parking, it's just maybe heating, not very much or if at all cooling, but the efficiencies of the door will definitely help in that reduce for the heating. Features and actuators enhance protection of people. I spoke about that before. We are actually governed by a UL325 for high performance doors. What that means for safety is we have to do either what we call a light curtain, which is what you'd see in an elevator. It's basically a full height uh, safety system that goes across the door, or we can do what we call reversing edge and a photo eye, which is fairly traditional and kind of old school. This black piece right here would be a reversing edge. So if somebody touched it, it would reverse. And then you can see the lines that are actually from the light curtain that go across the door. If somebody breaks through that door while the door is moving, the door will go into the upward position. And if they stand in that beam or near the photo eye, um, breaking that beam, the door will hold open. So that's the safety for that. Um, work enhanced because of the fast and opening closing speeds. In this case, the flow of traffic is enhanced because of the fast opening and closing speeds. Again, speeds up to 100 inches per second. These are run with a variable speed drive. So the VFD, again, can be adjusted where you could reduce the speed down to something a little bit more manageable. 100 is really fast, but most of the time you wouldn't need a 100 inch per second door. Min minimizing operational costs, again, not a lot of wear items on these doors, if at all. No springs, direct drive only. Uh, we usually recommend on the average door, we're talking, you know, once they get it dialed in, they're coming back every six months to take a look at the door to make sure everything's okay. So maybe a bi-yearly preventive maintenance plan would be the most you'd have to do. Uh, again, high cycle ability, 1 million plus cycles with minimum maintenance. That's a pretty big deal. Why high performance doors? Again, added security because of the fast and opening closing speeds. With these types of doors, if we dial them in correctly, we can almost eliminate, but definitely mitigate any tailgating through a parking garage structure. And I know that's a big deal. People talk about it all the time. Uh, the, in addition to that, the people who are walking in, maybe unwanted people walking into the condo garage, by using and setting the system up correctly, we can make sure the door is closed immediately once the car has passed through the opening. Again, the ability to take abuse, the breakaway bottom bar, and self-repairing features on the fabric and rubber door models. Um, indicates commitment to corporate image and progress of, and growth. I mean, they do look, they have a really cool aesthetic feel to them. So, you know, that commitment and the corporate image is definitely helped there. Uh, the attractive and clean looking. Um, so you can separate one work area from another. In this case here, if this, on this picture, a lot of times what we do on existing openings that don't even have a door, it's an entrance and an exit. A lot of times we'll split it into two openings like you'll see here. That way then they have the functionality of two doors. And if a door does go down or get impacted, you can reroute traffic through just one of the openings rather than having one large door opening. I say two is better than one. Um, it aids in protection uh, uh, against harsh conditions, wind, snow, and rain. Obviously, nobody likes to, you know, walk through a puddle in, in, in the Midwest where I'm from. It's a pretty big deal to be able to close off an opening. Um, reduction in sound, you wouldn't think that would be a big deal unless you're the condo or the apartment that's right above the door opening. If you ever saw one of these rolling steel doors open and close, you guarantee you the person who's right above there 
is probably irritated and would love to see something that runs a little bit smoother and is far more uh, efficient and quiet. Um, so we'll get into some of our models. Again, we have three models that we're focusing on today, uh, primarily obviously for the parking and build designs. Number one being kind of the top end of our, of our model specs is our Speed Guardian or the SG5000. It's commonly used for both exterior and interior applications. I would say more so exterior. Um, for door openings, getting up anywhere from 21.4 to 21.4, and we can even go a little bit wider um, if we can reduce the height. I would say a majority of the time in parking garages, we're not gonna go quite that large. We do have different configurations for the headroom. Again, this type of door here does require a larger area above the opening to fit it in, but we do have other um, models available that would be able to potentially fit. Uh, again, rapid operating speeds. We've been talking about this throughout the, throughout the presentation, 80 to 100 inches per second. Quite honestly, 40 to 50 is really fast uh, if you're kind of keeping track. Low friction operation for high cycle demands. Um, dependable security with rigid metal door curtains. So this one here checks the box for security, unlike the fabric and the rubber door potentially. The vision, what you're seeing in this picture, we call that the CV or complete vision. We can also do ventilated slats and we can also tint um, white or smoke gray on, on the vision slats as well. Um, the nice thing about the high performance rigid door, the SG5000 is insulated in our ideal for reducing heat loss. And they actually improve on acoustics in the value, as a value add. So there's a lot, a lot of benefits of this door overall from not just the operation standpoint, but you know, the flexibility and the ability to change out slats and make them solid or, or, or vision or ventilated. Um, provides long lasting ultra quiet operation. This by far is our quietest door. It actually runs on a continuous track. Unlike a rolling steel door, it rolls up on itself. This never makes contact with itself as it rolls up the track. Uh, the next slide, you'll be able to see a little bit more clearly what I mean by that. And again, aesthetically pleasing. And then we can paint these doors. Uh, we do a wet paint on these because they are insulated from the factory. So we can't do a powder coat process because um, that requires heat and that wouldn't be good for the insulation we use. Uh, but it does give us some flexibility to paint the doors in a wet spray. Uh, and uh, instead of having to paint both sides of the door, we can save money by only painting the exterior. So there's a, a pretty good, pretty substantial benefit of this type of door if, if the customer wants to paint it. Here we go, some cool pictures of the different doors that we put out. These are all the guardians, again, variations of vision and no vision. Here's a, what we call a low headroom up in the top left corner. Again, the track continues through kind of like a garage door up and back. This fits in as little as 20 inches of headspace. The door next to it is another SG5000 painted. What you see above there is what we call fascia slats. A lot of times we'll put these fascia slats in. If you have no room, but we can bring the door down. Let's say you have a 10 foot opening and you only need seven to fit the door in. We need about three feet of headspace. That would allow us to be able to put the door down further and then we could cover it up and make it look aesthetically pleasing with these fascia type slats. Again, painted with windows. Uh, completely solid doors. We've got the parking entry door here, painted gray. Here's one that's full vision. I think you get the point there. As far as aesthetics goes, this is definitely the top of the line door for aesthetics and overall operation. Um, this I like to call the Steel Ranger door, the Guardian's little brother. It's an amazing door. Um, it's, it's used in parking applications and ramp doors all over the place. A little bit from an aesthetic standpoint and operational, this is a standard type rolling steel door that is high performance. So it does have the speeds, not quite 80 to 100, but fast. Again, for applications, both exterior and interior. In this case here, this door is designed for slightly smaller openings. And again, 
most of the parking garage doors that we're putting in are far smaller than our overall capability, so we're good. We do have a low header model here as well. So there's a standard header that's about 24 inches of headspace that would be above the door. And then this low headroom would be 19 inches. So there's some flexibility there if we don't have the room. Again, high speed, springless rolling steel door here. Rapid speed opening up, up to around 45 inches per second. Again, it is durable. It's with the rigid, rigid metal door curtain. And the visions are available and ventilation as well. You can see the window design is slightly smaller. It's about a four inch wide, I call it a port window. And then you can apply as many windows as you want going vertical. And then we would automatically apply the number of windows going across depending on the door size. Um, again, aesthetically pleasing, same thing goes here for the paint. We could paint this both sides or just the exterior, and that can be done in any RAL color available. Some cool pictures of the Steel Ranger door. We've got the one with the custom paint, looks pretty cool. And then you can kind of see the one in the middle here with the window pattern slightly different. There are two window patterns. This is what we call a cluster. And then also you can spread them out evenly over the over the width of the door. So there's two options there. And again, the, the amount of windows on the, on the spread out version is dependent on the width of the door. So aesthetically pleasing. Uh, one thing to point out on the Steel Ranger, because it is a rolling steel door that is high performance, um, when it rolls up on itself, it can be a little bit noisy. So we add foam pads for sound reduction. And if you tweak the, the speed a little bit, you can also reduce some of that sound transmission when the door is rolling up and down. And then we get into the rubber door. A lot of people look at this rubber door and they say, well, no, we can't put that on our building. It doesn't look right. But this picture, I think, helps us get past that point. It's, it's a rare bird, but it's nice to be able to see an exotic car you know, in line or near a rubber door. Um, what you don't get in aesthetics here, you get in form and function. The rubber door being kind of the end all be all when it comes to overall return on investment. Uh, this is kind of the top of the line when it comes to that because of the ability of that door to be impacted. Um, this one does come with a springless design as well. We do a low headroom and an extra low headroom door on this. Um, when I say extra low headroom, it's a 13 inch header, which is huge when you get down to very, very short openings with no room above the door opening. This is the one door that can fit into just about every application. Uh, instead of a direct drive door in this case, this HDLH, which is the extra low headroom, which is 13, has a front mount motor on it, meaning you, what you get for 13 inches of header, you also gain on the sides. And we can fit that into as little as nine inches on both sides. So this one, you can really wedge into an opening and it's super flexible. We also have a direct drive, low headroom type door. Again, that's that motor on the side, it's still springless, a little bit larger size available there. The material in this case is a quarter inch SBR black rubber material. Just think of it as like a belting type material. It's very durable, has a lifetime warranty on the workmanship. Um, I have yet to see one fail in the, in, the, in the field. And again, we've got those speeds up to 55 inches per second. The way that we keep this door from blowing out of the opening is we use a new gen guy, which is aluminum. And then we, we bolt in curtain locks up the sides of the curtain. And between the guide and the curtain locks, they work together in holding the wind from blowing the door in. Um, we also have a pop patented pivoting bottom bar. What that means to you is just in layman's terms is you can hit this door and it can be reset very easily. So those are the three designs, the, the Guardian, the Steel Ranger, and here's the rubber door. Um, one thing to point out here on this picture bottom left is we can do a sloped bottom bar as well. We see that a lot in parking garages. Uh, that's kind of the reality and nature of the beast of that of this industry. 
Um, and then also, if you look here, this is from the inside looking, and you can kind of see where the operator sits in this particular door. Typically, it would sit outside of that, maybe on the sides here. But because they had to wedge them in here together, the operator being on the front was a benefit. So what else can we offer to you guys in regards to doors? It's not just the doors, it's the options and accessories. This is how do we activate the door? How do we keep the doors safe from being damaged? Um, in modern high performance doors require careful consideration for sure when selecting the proper door activation accessories. You know, you wanna realize that full benefit and, and potential. And then that's where we come in as, as regional sales managers or consultants we work closely with you guys to make sure that we're getting the right product into the opening, but also making sure that we're activating it and keeping it safe. So some of the state-of-the-art activation features was a lot of you may already know about, obviously, it's like the remote control activation and monitoring. That's a good one until it's not, because then, you know, if somebody leaves and you have to maybe potentially replace all the remotes, I would say that would be good for a smaller garage. RFIDs, a big thing. We definitely work with RFID companies or our partners do to gain access to the door. Our control boxes all are already set up to accept any RFID or remote keypad or, or remote controls and, and or motion detectors as well. So it's basically plug and play, ready to go. It's just a matter of picking out the right one and applying it correctly. Thermal performance, so during that design consideration, a lot of people ask about the R value. In, in our case here, R value is great, but because the door is so fast and it is a high cycle type setup, it really comes down to U value, which is the, basically everything, including on the door. It's R value, it's the speed of the door, it's the number, number of cycles. Um, there's a number of different parameters that we use to, to kind of get that U value. I think it's less uh, applicable in parking, uh, maybe more so in, in a cold storage environment or something like that. But we definitely have the, the tools to provide that type of information if needed. Um, fitting and installation clearances. Again, I always say lean on us. We're the industry experts when it comes to high performance doors. We can get you at least close to where you need to be. We are available for on-site. We're available for Skype and Zoom calls as well. Whatever it takes to be able to get comfortable with what we're talking about, we're always available for that. Here's our team right here. Um, so Herman up on the top, our US team consists of our sales manager, Peter Burnham. We have two vertical managers and the rest of the guys cover a general regional area. And then we also have representation in Canada um, and obviously throughout the world. Herman's a very large company. If it's not here in North America and you need additional information, certainly uh, shoot it by us and we'll be able to help you get to the right people. So other resources, and this is specific to architects and designers. We are the only high performance door company in North America to staff an architectural support manager. Josh is an amazing asset to us. He speaks to speak of architects and designers. He's the perfect guy to go to and lean on when you need um, the BIM or the CAD work or different things like that, where he needs to give you some kind of deeper dive information. Uh, Josh is our guy for that. So that actually concludes the PowerPoint portion of the presentation. I guess we can open it up to any Q&A. Yeah, thank you, Brian. And yeah, if anybody has any questions now, is the time to type it in the chat or type it in the Q&A tab. Um, we do have a couple questions here, Brian. So um, first question we got are, what are the major differences between Herman and Ritec? Yeah, that's a good question. So Herman and Ritek are very similar in, in many regards. We're both the industry leaders in high performance doors. What I think sets us apart from Ritek is the fact that we are a privately held company. We're huge. We're worldwide. Um, uh, we do have the ability to build our equipment with a little bit more state-of-the-art equipment to keep lead times down and costs down. Um, 
But the one thing Ritex got going for them is they've been around for a while. But from from a from a side by side standpoint, we have every equipment they do, and vice versa, uh, minus the steel ranger door. The steel ranger door that we have would be the game changer in regards to parking garages. Thank you, Brian. Um, one person just asked, can, will you send this presentation via email? <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, we will also follow up with the video as well as I'm sure yeah. you'll get something from Herman as well, guys. Yeah. Um, can the doors work with license plate recognitions for access? That's a good question. I, I'm guessing yes. That's the first time I ever heard that. Again, we have all the dry inputs in our control box. So we couldn't power necessarily up whatever recognition equipment they're using. But if you're sending us a signal to recognize whatever they're telling us to do to either ignore it or, or, or open the door, we can do that. We just need to be told when to open and then we'll open and close. Gotcha. So you guys can control how, how that door is opening and closing. Thank you. Um, Taylor Kim asked, how do the costs compare between the rigid door and standard steel doors? It's a good question. So honestly, they're always going to be a little bit more expensive, but your return on investment is going to be much better. The average lifespan of a, of a rolling steel type door on a 10 by 10 opening is going to be far, far less than any one of the three options that I presented today. So the upfront cost is going to equal out to a longer term door. Thank you, Brent. Um, somebody asked, what is the lead time and average cost on 12 by 10 opening? Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. So lead times are very, very good for our equipment. We're averaging on the fabric and the steel side of call it three to four weeks, which is very good in our industry right now. Um, and then the rubber door side, it's a little bit longer because that's a little bit more labor intensive type setup, but we're, we're probably industry best when it comes to lead times for sure. Thank you. The average cost, oh, yeah. the second part of that, it's relative. It depends on the equipment, right? I mean, all three of those doors that we presented today are going to be different in cost. Starting with the rubber and the guardian door, kind of the high-end steel one, and then the steel ranger being the, the more cost-effective model. So if you want to talk a little bit more about cost, you can call us directly. We'll get you in uh, touch with with the regional manager, we can put budget numbers out for sure. Great, thank you, Brian. What are the standard safety systems? Good question. Yeah, so I think I touched on it a little bit here, but the safety systems, again, we're required by UL 325 to provide a, and manufacture our doors with the safety system. And again, it's either a light curtain or a photo edge and a reverse, or sorry, photo eye and reversing edge setup. But what we do with that then is we usually pair that up with a little bit more safety in regards to some more of the sensors we have out there. We have a good, really good partnership with a company called BEA. They're the industry leader in, in sensors for high performance doors. And we usually throw in some options for their type of equipment to, again, we're only guarding the inline of the door. We like to guard both sides of the door. So beyond the threshold, Front and back is where we start talking a little bit more. And that's where our consultant, um, our, our ability to consult is, is far better than most. Thank you. Catherine asks, how does the rubber door handle vehicle impact? It's amazing. That's the whole design around it is, depending on how hard you hit it, it is designed to break away. So inside of our bottom bar, on, the, on each end that's in the guide, there is a breakaway tab. So when the door is hit, that breakaway tab is designed to break away out of the opening and it'll, it'll flow out depending again, how hard the door is hit. Thank you, Ryan. Somebody asked, in the event of a power outage, does the door automatically go up to allow cars to freely exit? It can, yes, yep. Thank you. Um, just, to, just to go off of that too, there are other systems available. Um, the main part of the door that we add to that, if, if they don't have an automatic door open feature, would be a chain hoist. So there's the ability to get the door open regardless. Gotcha. Somebody asked, what is the warranty period? 
depending on the model, anywhere from five years on average and 500 to a million cycles. And again, we're talking about a springless type door. So that's a, that's a big, big deal when you're talking about sprung doors versus springless. Mm. Thank you, Brian. Some more questions you have asked them. Um, how do the doors get to the market and who handles service and warranty? That's great. Yeah, so we are just the manufacturer. We have a nationwide distribution network that we work through. So we've got a number of different local companies, depending on you, where you are, that are trained and well-versed in our equipment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions for Brian from Herman? Any last questions? We do have some videos of the impactability of the rubber door. If somebody wants them, let me know. You can send those out as well. Okay. We will send those out. If uh, Just let me know if you are interested in getting those videos. If there are no more questions, Ryan, I hand it over to you to uh, for any last words. Well, I think um, just overall, just based on what we talked about here, the, the biggest takeaway is in, with the high performance doors, you get a springless door with a pretty impressive warranty. You get the ability to consult with an industry expert and make sure that the product and, and all the ancillary features and benefits are being applied correctly. And then utilizing our, our nationwide dealer network to make sure that doors are working correct, installed correctly. And then you have that 24 service uh, serviceability is key for high performance doors. Thank you, Brian. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, if you have any, uh, we will be following up with the uh, video. Uh, and like I said, if you're interested in a video, please let me uh, in the video about uh, what Brian mentioned, please let me know. But thank you for joining us for today's Learning Lab. Have a great day, everybody.